That's the call center. Cool. We actually have, you can see there, this tells you the average wait time, which is 10 seconds, cool. which is the limit. Yeah. 92% on target. 3% abandoned calls. Yeah. These are very important statistics because this is the lifeblood. How do you deal with training? Like, because I know, like, we're the same thing. Like, you train people so long, but then, like, even the past couple of years, the churn is so much. Yeah. How do you deal with that? You just keep on training them. Yeah. It's just a constant process. You're constantly hiring, constantly training. We're, we're trying to actually reward them more. That's a large part of the thing. Like, for example, we've got a um, we had a trivia night last night, mm -hmm. which was for the prospects. So we said, anybody from the staff want to come in and join the trivia night? Have, have dinner on us tonight. We've got a games night going. Same mm -hmm. thing. We'll come and play games and, you know, cheat and, you know, card <laughs> games and Jim's Monopoly. We're going to be playing out yeah. and chess. Yeah. So anybody who wants to from the staff can come in at that. We give them lunches once a week. Right. So, and we just gave them a pay rise. And, and we also give them a, a way to go because a lot of the, lot of the ladies in here actually, in, including Steph, actually started off in the call center. Mm. And they actually went to the call center, became leaders and managers, and then we hired, we bribed them to come across here. <laughs> and uh, th there's a real career path. Yeah. So you can actually rise from working in a call center into management in Jim's group. Yeah. So that, that's a big plus for us. Mm -hmm. But you've got to look after your staff. You've got to make sure it's a great, it's a great environment to them and yeah. treat them well. And I, I wander around and say hello to people and so forth. And just we've got a sporting complex opening up fairly shortly too. In a couple of months, it's going to be ready, so they can free access to a heated pool and a gymnasium and racquetball court. Yeah, that's awesome. I, what I don't understand is how you all do so many services over the phone. Because like, the amount of information you almost have to know. You don't have to know very much. I guess they're really passing along to the friends. All they're doing is they're just saying they, the, the type of service, their address and their details, and then it passes them to the franchisee, and the franchisee then contacts them. Got it. So if there's specific, like, industry-specific questions, it's going to be the franchisee. The, the girls in the call center would not, all the guys too for that, mate, they would not, they would not know that kind of stuff. Got it. Got it. Yeah. That's awesome. Anyway. Jade, you're, you're, you're for the call centre? Yes, I am. Yep, I was a team leader. Team leader for the call centre. Cool. How, long, how long have you been with us for? Were you in the call centre for? Yeah, so um, almost 10 years. Wow. Well, yeah. And into now, what's your role? Um, I'm the franchise for dog grooming. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Yeah. So she's the, the, the she actually rings people up regularly and says, how are you going? And it helps them with any difficulties. So all the stuff. trailers out there, those are your responsibility. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Right. Not all of them, actually. You couldn't do all of them because there's too many now. We've got, we've got nearly 200, but, but Jade looks after quite a few. Cool. That's awesome. But that's a, it's a big change, isn't it? You started running, you, you never yeah. thought when you, when you started taking calls in the call center, you'd come to something like this, would you? Yeah, never. No. How is that managing all, all even the trailers? Because even the past couple, like this past year with the supply chain and everything, has that been difficult just getting the trailers and everything? Well, Sharon's a divisional, so she does more of the trailer aspect, which is got good, it. so I can focus more. Well, we've got 19 trailers sitting out there, actually. I saw, yeah, I saw them up there. Yeah, so so we're, a bit, we're a bit ahead of it. We always <laughs> were behind, but now we've right. got a good supplier and a good quality good. trailers. Yeah. Good, good. good system in place, yeah. I bet you I go through a lot of trailers, my goodness. Yeah. We do. Well, we've got, <laughs> we've got 200 franchisees in dog wash now. Oh, well, good to meet you. Actually, the lady who started that, Sharon Connell, she started as a cleaning franchisee too. Really? Wow. And she got a franchisor and then she took over the dog wash division. Cleaning carpets wasn't fun enough? Like, you like, gotta do dogs. She wasn't actually a cleaner <laughs> for very long. She used to be in, in, working in hospitals. Um, just, just through here, there's the, uh, that's part of her IT support system. Now, this used to be a university, right? Yeah, it did. It was Swimber. Got it. This is the IT. Here you are. This is the, uh, the, the, smart the, the brains behind the thing that keeps us all going. When um, you see small font on a screen, you know you're in the IT department. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, this is, this, is, this is part of it. It's yeah. awesome. Very How's cool. it going? You coming to the uh, game site tonight? I would, but I have to drive an hour home, so... Oh, uh, no, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. All right. That's very cool. So is most of your time on this side of things then? In here a lot? That's my office, I don't right spend much okay. time there. I mostly work from home. Okay. I, I saw the one video in here. It looked bigger though. <laughs> it's not it's not very it's not very elaborate. This is yeah, no. uh, I just spend a lot of time here, Functional. very bare. But it's okay. It's awesome. I, I can print things out and stuff like that. That's a ball that I normally sit on. 
I like sitting on a board. It's good for you. It's good for your. Uh, yeah, it actually activates the quads while you're sitting down and everything. Yeah, and I'm very, I'm a very active sitter. I like to move around a lot. Yeah, Joel had mentioned uh, the other day when he, in his talk that you were kind of stagnant for ten years with not too much franchisee growth, but then in 2019, since then it's gone up like over a thousand locations. Yes. Well, before COVID, we had like 3,800. We're now 4,700. Yeah. Wow. And we'll be going probably at 5,000 by the end of the year. Wow. It's been a very good time for us. Yeah. Not even quite sure why, actually. I well, think. he said partly social media, so we need to give them all the... Credit. Joel's a bit biased. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think... So no, I do agree, actually. Social yeah. media probably has a big part of it. Yeah. And I also you... got a very high profile because I had a battle with the Victorian... I saw that. ...premier. From That's Connor. right when I was interviewing you last time. Yeah. It was right after that. <laughs> That's right. He's... He's... Uh, it sort of raised our profile quite a lot. Yeah. And I think the fact that I stood up for my guys probably created a pretty good impression. Yeah. Which we do, because it's always franchising's first. Yeah. That, that's the secret of franchising. It's not, it's not customers first. No. It's, it's, it's franchisees first. If your mm -hmm. franchisees are happy and are successful, it's easy to grow. Mm -hmm. If they're not, you've got to use the most slick salesmanship and then it's just it's, it's tough. Yeah. I wanted to ask about the software. I know you talked about how much you spend on the software and trying to make it better and everything. And obviously yeah. yesterday I was able to see you know, how F, FS, FSM or whatever it is, F, FMS, yeah. Jim Jobs and Jim's Online. Like that's been our big struggle too, is just the software side, trying to build what we need, but the cost of it is. Well, we're spending something like $5 million a year yeah. on software development yeah. alone. And that's not including sort of support and networking and stuff. It's a big, big project. But it does actually create a competitive advantage because no competitor can come anywhere close to right. what we do. They just can't possibly compete with how we do it. Yeah. And that's, the bigger we get, the more we can afford to spend on IT and, and the bigger the advantage. I mean, some of the, the, the changes you're going to see like in, the, in our software development program, in the, the franchisee system we call Jim's Job or Visa, that's going to be massive when it's going. It'll, it'll make it, we'll be able to book jobs directly into their diaries. We'll be able to buy and sell regular clients. We'll be able to have a reminders of jobs not done. We'll be letting clients know what's happening. A, a dedicated client app that they can actually check what's going on. They can ring, they can get a service done by pressing a button. Yeah. There's it just, there's so much we can do. Yeah. We haven't even put our small toe in the water with what, I, what, what IT will do over the next few years. Joel said that's your, still your biggest headache though. It is. <laughs> it is. It's, 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 it's the biggest advantage and it's the biggest headache. Yeah, no, totally. Which, which, oh, and here, oh my, these are the ones you were giving away last night. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's, my, that's my project. Okay, so what, in, in a nutshell, what is epigenetics exactly? Well, ep like, I've heard it a hundred times, I don't really know. Epigenetics is. is the science of how you turn genes on or off. Okay. Okay. You know, you, know, you know what a gene basically is? It's a little, little machine that pumps out a protein. Right. Mostly in the form of things like um, RNA mm -hmm. forms. Okay. What happens, I believe, I mean humans are very genetically similar, but the way our genes are turned on or off affects dramatically things like character. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you have a genetic, epigenetic settings that make people very hard working and enterprising, you tend to have a wealthy country like Australia or America, for example. And if they're set differently, you'll have a much poorer country. Mm. It also issues to do with drug addiction, alcoholism, and a lot of mental illness. It's to do with epigenetic settings. So what we're actually doing is using rat models. Mm. We're actually restricting their food and doing other kinds of things like that to try and make them psychologically healthy, you might say. Mm. So this is a project I'm spending currently a couple of million dollars a year on. Mm. And that's the um, account of where I got up to. So the trouble is it changes all the time, so. Right. What, this is this book's about six months old and it's already slightly out of date. Is it more the like the uh, pharmaceutical side of things for epigenetics, or more mechanical, like not eating things like that? That would be the well, the, not eating. If you if you fast, for example, and if you right. restrain, you do you can actually change it, but it's very difficult for people to do it. Right. So we're looking at more pharmaceutical. Got it. You could actually have an injection potentially, or you you just have something that you can smell or. Hmm. or use a viral vector for an RNA modifier, something like that. You can, you can do all kinds of things. It's very similar technology to what they, they're doing to um, develop vaccines. Right. Yeah. But it's hugely right. advanced in recent years, actually, so this kind of thing is quite practical. Mm -hmm. If this works out, it'll, it'll be massively important. Right. It'll be all over the world. Is that similar? Not similar, but I, I know it's not similar, but like kind of the same line of thought with stem cells then almost? 
Oh, the stem cells would be more a matter of growth. Yeah, stem cells is, is different. Right. But, but basically a stem cell is a cell that's not differentiated. Right. Now what happens when a, the difference between a cell that becomes, say, part of your brain or part of your heart or part of your liver, it, that's all to do with epigenetics too, because it turns on or off certain genes so that it causes it to have certain functions. Right. But even once it's in place, the way it's turned on or off can affect all kinds of things to do with the way it um, operates. Right. So everything's got to do with, with epigenetics in a sense. Right. That's awesome. Because all every cell in your body has exactly the same DNA. Right. But there are some cells that do different things according and that's all to do with the epigenetic switching. So this is the, the big thing. I think actually epigenetics is bigger than genetics in terms of its implications. Right. It could, it could do all kinds. It could cure poverty worldwide. It could, it could, it could, it could cure drug addiction. It could do immense things. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, awesome. you're welcome to coffee if you like. Oh, I, I, I don't know. It. It's, it's, it's not easy going. I have to warn you. <laughs> well, hey, your other book was only 100 pages. So if I can get through that one, this one's only. This what? one is a little bit so. tougher reading. <laughs> you're, 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 <laughs> you're welcome to it. <laughs> yeah, I'll sign it for you. Right? Oh yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. If, it, if, it, if it's successful and if it comes out and they give me a Nobel Prize for this, then this book's going to be worth a lot of money. <laughs> uh, there you are. Thank you, sir. All right, let me take you through and show you the call center. What, the, what are all changes are they having to make to kind of change from just taking the leads to actually booking the uh, jobs now? Yes, that's what, that's what they do it. So is it mostly just the training side or the technology side that really you're working on for that? Well, this is, this is the training the staff to take the calls. The technology is different. Got it. We're, we're constantly um, upgrading the, uh, the systems and trying to make them better right. in terms of IT. As Joel said, it's a long way to go, but this is uh, the nerve center. This is where the leads come in. Very cool. And what hours is, it, is this place open then? It's open basically about 7 a.m. till about 9 p.m. Okay. But we're looking at going to a 24-hour model soon. Got it. Most it's still all housed here? Um, the the after-hour stuff would have to come from some of the Philippines. It's too Got expensive it. here. Right, right, right. So we, 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 we answer calls preferentially locally because right. people local accents, people understand you. People prefer local people, but yeah, a lot of the back office works now down yeah. in the Philippines. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Well, here's our Very call cool. center going. Actually, we need a few more people. We could, we're nearly trying to... Adding some new desks there. Hire for spring. They're all very busy, which is good. How's it going? Hi. So, what's your name? Natalia. Natalia. I'm, I'm Jim I haven't met before. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. This is Mike, who's a visitor from... Good to meet you, Natalia. America. How do, you, how do you like working here? How long have you been here now? Very nice, very nice. What was the hardest part of getting trained up, you think? Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. We've exchanged emails. We've probably exchanged emails many, many times over the years, but I don't recognise them because we don't actually meet. Right. Yeah. So. Oh, good. Mm. good. You're taking a, a leading role now, are you? Are you? A Um, yeah, very cool. It's quite challenging. How long will it take you to learn the, to use the system properly? You're still learning. When the, when the franchisee calls in, I know there's a separate line for them. Do you answer those as well? Absolutely. Got it. Yeah, so we're answering, um, we give them priority, actually, even over clients, because franchisees are the most important. Yep. Yeah, so franchisees, clients. Mm -hmm. um, and clients. Yeah. 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 Have you had the lunch? Did you have the lunch last week? Oh, you'll enjoy that. There'll be, there'll be lunch coming in tomorrow. They, they have a nice little pack 
Yeah. Oh, cool. Because everybody here is part of Jim's group, so we yeah. want to look after you. See, you've probably really just been in the office recently. If you yes. worked, oh my goodness. Working from home for a, for quite a, a long year and time. a half, two years? Wow. Real people. Yeah. It's a real place. It is. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, and there's a lunchroom in there. We look, look after our staff. Very nice. We, provide, we, we put free fruit on. Oh yeah. Un unlimited fruit during the day. Yeah. Which is good because it's it's a bit of a perk, but also keeps people healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm really keen on health, exercise, those kind of things too. Right. Is everyone back in the office basically now? Not completely, but mostly. Mostly. Okay. If they were back, all these office, all these desks will be filled. Yeah, we had to let a few people go because they didn't want to come back. Yeah. <laughs> Are a lot of the people in this call center already related to gyms type mowing? Like are gyms franchisees and things like that? Like family or anything like that? Or? Sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Can you explain to Mike about how you originally, before the call center, and you had a mess, can you explain to Mike how you used to do it back before the sort of system was in place? Well, it used to be, originally gyms was a one, one room office. Right. And I had people answering the calls, but I pick up the phone myself quite often. Yeah. Which I haven't done for a while now because it's a really industrial process, but yeah. It's good to do things yourself, I find, because it, it, it helps you understand the struggles people go through. Mm -hmm. So as far as possible, I keep in touch with all my franchisees, as you know. Mm -hmm. I've got my phone number and email address, and I will probably have contact with probably at least a dozen, 15 franchises a day in one way or another. Yeah. Often about complaints or queries or just questions, and they, they all contact me, and they know they, know they can. Yeah. Yes, that was really primitive. I had a whole item, but uh, you know, you might have five staff working away, and only one of them is actually taking calls. The rest were just allocating them and checking the blackboard, and, uh, and then we used to have to dictate them to the franchisees. It was really primitive. That was back in 1999. Yeah. We, we couldn't do what we do without technology. It just wouldn't work. It'd be too expensive. You could not run. Even if we, we put all of our franchise fees towards allocating jobs, we just couldn't afford to run it. Right. There'd be no money in it. Yeah. Technology is very, very important. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, I've shown. Uh, well, that pizza or orange? Yeah, I'll show them pizza. Yeah. Maybe yeah, they can't put the pizza to talk about it. Yes. So, do each of the franchise, the divisional franchisors, also have a representative here? Uh, we're actually the divisional franchise for most divisions. Okay. No, franchisors have their own offices. Some Got of them it. work out of here. Got um, it. Hazmat, has, hazardous waste works, has an office on site. Is that sometimes a struggle they're dealing with because like the franchisors are somewhat running in their own company, like in terms of demands on the technology? Like, hey, we want this feature or this needs to well, be done there's this always, way? There's always a backlog to be done with right. IT. We, we never have enough people. Yeah. This is our, um, in here is our, where are they? This is where our documents team work. And they do all the contracts and so forth and look at compliance and there's actually hardly anybody here. <laughs> there's no problem, so. Our company lawyer sits there. Oh, He's in training this week. Why well, is not a tool center person you talk about? That. Yeah, you came from the tool center too, didn't you? Yeah, seven years ago. But it's kind of like a job of entry. It's a bit like the, um, this is Mike from America. He's got a franchise system. He's only just come and do training with us. Um, it's like, a, like the mail room used to be, isn't it? You start off in the call center and then lots of people around here originally started from the call center. Mail out the camera. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good spot. A lot of girls started here. Claire started in the call center and Sine started in the call center. Yeah. So now what do you do here? Okay. Same thing? Is that what you're doing now? Or no, I department? work in documents and clients now. Okay, got it. So she makes sure that things like um, trailers are compliant, people have the right uniforms and things I heard about on. the pictures. I Documents, that was genius. the contracts, the, the breach notices, the everything. I'm currently doing a trademark infringement at the moment, so. Nice. You get to send those like nasty letters saying if you don't, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. But, but she's never nasty. It's just, <laughs> we, we just make her be, be nasty. Pretty much. Oh, <laughs> Pretty much. I don't know, but I reckon myself alone, maybe five to ten a week. Oh. So that's the actual signing, like the franchise agreement? Yeah, creating new franchise agreements, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. 
Because there's, there's, there's a legality, you've got to have a disclosure document yeah. and they've got to hold it for 14 days and all kinds of things. It's a very regulated sort of process, which yeah. we of course have to stick to very carefully. For this team of four, so I used to do a and they used to do all the compliance to the group, which is an system. They do all the franchise agreements, and yeah, all the breach notices, all IP, all these other issues as well. It's the same registrations as well, everything the groups that they offer. Yeah. And a team of four or three now, uh, well, we've got what, Alex, Sine, Chloe, Claire, me. Yeah. And then there's Leo, who's leaving shortly. So. Yeah. Oh, but the good thing about it is, well, you're both you're you're a mum of six. No. <laughs> Come on now, Joel. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I've got two of my own and two stepkids, but yeah. they, we all live together. Yeah. And also, Leah and Chloe are also mums as well. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. How's the flexibility with that for you? Uh, it's pretty good. If we can keep working part time home, part time office, it's actually really good because mm -hmm. my kids like seeing me when I get when they get home from school and stuff. It's mm -hmm. really good. They like to see that I'm there and say hi to me and stuff. But they get more time. Like even though I'm not really spending time with them, they know that I'm there. So that makes mm -hmm. sense. How's the compliance with the trucks? Like I know I heard yesterday about the signs. I think that was genius. So people can't reuse the pictures from one year to the next. But is that like a matter of when they sign their franchise agreement, then they have to have that done within a certain amount of time after training or something? Yeah, so once they sign their agreement and they go live in the system, I think they get a month okay. to submit their first photos. Awesome. And, unless they, they're buying a new vehicle or something, which has been given a bit of leeway. But uh, yeah, that, before, the, before we did that, we used to have the, the worst, shoddiest trailers around the place. Yeah. Particularly in the mowing tradition, because some of them were so old, of course. But right. now it looks pretty good. Generally speaking, you don't see bad ones around anymore. Do you all actually sell the trailers though? Like I know the dog washing one, that's standardized. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. You don't really do that? We don't sell trailers. We don't ma make them ourselves. With a dog wash, we actually buy the trailers, then we just lend them to the franchisees so they oh, can. Okay. It's like a leasing model almost kind of thing. Not that you're leasing, it's just part of the deal. When, no. they, when they buy a franchise, we just say, here's a trial to use oh, as long okay. as you're a franchisee. Okay. As soon as you finish with the franchise, you just hand it back. So they don't have to, all they have to do is to come with the insurance and look after it and yeah. <laughs> well, Andy's in, in training, actually, he's doing franchisee training, I think. Hi there. Hi. Okay, come down this way. And, uh, this is um, what we call Jim's Plus here. Okay. With Bizza. Bizza, yes. Uh, something about, so far, about 38% of our leads are unserviced. Right. And oh, right. You had mentioned this to me last year. I remember that. And it's it's growing all the time. And um, hello. Hi there. Hello. This is Mike from the US. He's got a franchise system over there, so he's coming in just Good to, to learn you. a bit about Jim's group. You as well. This is the team that actually looks to yeah. unload the jobs we can't handle. We basically sell them to independents, got but it. then they offer a fairly rigorous system where if they don't actually give good service, then we. Uh, we, we cut them off at the knees. And this, this, these are the figures as to how much. Oh, wow. So this, this week so far, we've got 9,000, which is quite good. So this year, we're heading for $100,000 worth. Got it. And those costs per lead just based upon demand? It's, it's actually at least what the franchisees pay. Got it. Got it. Because what actually happens is that um, Quite often, these guys take leads and they like our leads because we only get to one person. Unlike, um, we have a system called um, High Pages where they give it to a whole lot of people and they compete to right, price. Right, right. We don't believe in competing on price, we compete on quality. So, what happens is we give it to one person in an and area. they pay for the lead, they look, don't look after it, then we don't send them any more. Um, quite often, what will happen is they'll actually become franchisees because they like the lead so much and they want all the work instead of just right. the, the leftover. Yep. How does that work with uh, the transfer from call center to here then? Is it a matter of like, oh, we don't have anyone in your area the call center, available? The call center does it. This oh, is, I got you. What this office does is they, they pull people on. Got they it. get people on who are new franchisees, uh, sorry, new contractors on, teach them the system, follow them up, yep. um, just explain what's going on and kick them off if they don't do a good job. Yep. So they'd almost be at the bottom of the totem pole after the call center can't find any franchisees, like, hey, we'll pass it off. I wouldn't describe them as the bottom of any policy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>
It's a very really important priority. role, actually. It makes it makes money, which yeah. we actually can apply. For example, we have a box at the Marvel Stadium where you can go to see the um, AFL. Yep. That's all. That's paid for by the fact that people are buying these surplus leads. Mm -hmm. And the other good thing about it is that is that instead of just saying no to hundreds of thousands of customers, we can actually give them an option and right. send someone on who's usually quite good. Yep. This this figures here are very important too. This tells you the the star rating, 4.53. I don't know if it's was. It's bad, is it? It's been raining. Just blame it on the rain. This tells you the quality of the of the surveys that are coming in. 4.53 is not particularly good. We've been up to about what's the best we've been about 4.7. Yeah. Most franchises are about 4.7, so the aim, part of the aim of Jim's Plus is to try and give Maintain work that. to the, you can see the numbers here, say 4.67, yeah. 4.57, 4.5, 4.62. And what's, what's the USL? Un unserviced leads. Oh, got it. Okay. That, that's the percentage of unserviced leads. Got it. They've actually hit like um, 50%, which is very high. Usually it's, it's rising to about a third. It used to be a lot lower, you can see there. But as time's gone on and we're getting people are getting to hear about it, we get a lot of people coming in from referrals. Yeah. So we're gradually upping the proportion of franchise. The aim is to have no one service leads. Right. We want every person to get a. Um, we want every client who contacts us to get sent somebody decent. Right. Is it common to have more unservice leads on the weekend just because they're turning off work? On the franchisees on their end? No, not really. Because we don't get so many leads the weekend. Got I don't it. know. When, when, when do we get our most unservice leads? Right. So would the percentage be higher? So this is 66%. That's that's. Have you have you managed to work out why the unserviced leads are dropping? It's a bit alarming. I don't think they must be going somewhere else. I don't think they're getting this unserviced leads because we're heading up into spring, which is really busy, really really busy. That's when the unserviced leads are going to soar. Yeah. Last spring we were actually a certain time we were missing out on most of the leads were unserviced, we just couldn't handle them. Are there any of the departments that kind of balance out that spring rush? Like, do, are they more busy more during the winter or not really? Um, not really, no. no so it's most, very most, spring, most, yeah. most people, most divisions are busier in spring and summer. But most, most franchises are flat out year round. Right. We don't have a lot of slack in the system, which is why there's so many unserviced leads, which is why we need this department. Yeah. Because it's, it's a money earner, but it's also better for clients. It's like the traditional thing with retail. You know, if you go to a retail shop and they don't have what you want, what they do, what they should do, is say, look, sorry, we don't have it, but if you go to so-and-so, they will have it for you. That is just standard good retail, because you're doing something for the client, and it makes it more likely to come back to you next time. Right. If you just say, I haven't got a clue, go away. I mean, so that's what we're trying to do. So it's a very important role. Yeah. More for that second one, actually, more because of the customer experience it improves. If people mm -hmm. know they can call gyms and get great service every time, right. we're going to get a lot more interested to make sure all of our franchises are flat out all year round, which is what we need. And then the independents take the, take the overflow. Mm. If they don't want the overflow, well then become a franchisee. And yeah. Oh, one guy I was just talking to, he was, um, had an independent business, he became a franchisee, he does gutter clearing. Huh. Nothing but gutter clearing, but he makes himself a thousand bucks a day. Oh. Clearing yeah, gutters. Cassie at Mantenas, when her previous business came on board by the gym's lead, Cassie Barber, yeah. she'd done a set, she'd done a to do 800 or something during her first year. Yeah. As an independent These leads got to get a commission when they sell, fran sell franchise licenses to uh, these uh, Gyms Plus people. <laughs> we just want to grow. Since we've gone giving you five of these today, why don't you just join? We're very obsessed. We want our franchises to be happy and we want more of them. We don't really care to make as much money up front. In fact, we charge less for franchises than we used to. Right. The, the price is going down. You can buy a Pet Patrol franchise for under 10 grand, wow. all included. Wow. And they make good money too. Yeah. They, they go around walking dogs and cleaning up dog poo and feeding animals and all kinds of things. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, there you are. Crucial stage. What you, said, what you said yesterday was actually really interesting. I had mentioned I it to our franchisees actually this morning on our call. Because you had mentioned about how like the, uh, everyone talked about 50, 60% of small businesses failing, but what they forget to realize is that that includes basically any you know, entity under 50 employees. That includes a Taco Bell and a McDonald's or whatever. The failure rate of cleaning and gardening business in uh, worldwide, from the best stats that I've seen from the States and everywhere else, is about 90 to 95% in the first yeah. year. Because obviously if you buy a shop, you're a lot more committed. But if you right. go into a, your own cleaning business or something, 
it's, it's very easy to file. Most of them file. And they're deeper pockets. If they have a million dollars to spend in their build out, they're probably. They'll keep cares? going for a while. It's longer. a write off <laughs> for a few years. So our first year attrition rate is around 12%. Right. Which is much too high, yeah. but it's, it's a heck of a lot better than 90% or 95%. You said at the beginning before you did the training it was 75. 17%. Oh, 17. 17, not God, 17. I was going to fire. 17. Yeah. My I'm goodness. I'm still it. learning the accent. Come on now. 17. Look, don't worry. If you spend enough time in Australia, you'll learn to speak properly as well. Hey, my mom's from Australia, Western Australia. Really? She is. Didn't but, catch. Oh, no. I, I, I haven't picked up oh, any of it. <laughs> yeah, for your joke, I was gonna say last night. I, I, could help I, you out I cannot one. do a Texan accent. I, well, then I you can't can... get me for a no Aussie accent. Come on now. <laughs> but I, I speak properly already, Mike. I need to learn how. You gotta stoop down to our level. <laughs> I can do certain accent. I, I can. Uh, I've got, I do a. a um, I do a German accent. They have ways of making your talk. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll do that one. Uh, I can do, um, I can speak like an Irish accent. Irish, I, yeah, I can do that, that one. one. Um, what else can I do? Uh, no, no, I can't do that. <laughs> I think, I think, I think Irish and uh, uh, German is probably about, about the limit. For I, if I could learn, if I could learn to speak like a Texan, I would, I would. The TikTok views would go from 100,000 to 200,000, just like that. <laughs> Joel's really hoping that we get that. Well, we had over a million with that first joke, and the last one's not going too badly either. I've got, I've got, I'll, I know the one I'm going to do next week. Actually, it's the one about the uh, the guy, the worst day of his life. Next week. No, no, sorry, three weeks. Three, three. Next, next time. He wants me to do two. I haven't got that many good jokes. <laughs> So I've got, I've got, to, I've got to ration them out. And I'm always looking, I'm always looking for good ones. I should give a prize for a good joke. Anybody comes up with a good joke? It's always three people walking on barbecues, you know, and they're always fun. That was the first one. Everyone else put all three people walking on barbecues. What about this one? A mushroom walked into a bar and walked up and said, "Have a beer," and the mushroom and the guy goes, "You a mushroom?" And he said, "Yeah." And he goes, "Sorry, we don't serve mushrooms here." And he goes, "Why not? I'm a fun guy." <laughs> oh man! That's the next career move is comedian. I think I think I'll stick to my Fra day job. Franchising, thinking. epigenetics, comedian. That looks good in a bio. <laughs> the online stuff is very helpful though. The, yeah. This business with the Ask Jim thing that Joel came up with that was two years ago, wasn't it? Nah, three years ago. Three years ago. It's been quite successful. We don't get that many watches. We only get about 70 or so on average who are actually watching. But, yeah. but Joel takes the clips and, and spreads them on different social media platforms. We get some interesting things. Yeah. I, do, well, I do probably at least a, a podcast once a week. Mm -hmm. I just talk to anybody or anything, including kids and teenagers and everybody. And they just record it and they can use it. It's all good for social media. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's such a big thing these days. It's been really impressive. I do think the reason we've grown so much post-COVID has been because of the social media has been so good. Most franchisees have actually, most prospects have actually seen. Yeah. Well, yesterday they asked who here watched YouTube videos before coming, every single person. Yeah. Raise their hand. They do, yeah. Yeah, they do. But it's good actually. I, I used to give talks, but you know, I, I would give a talk and I'd go to somewhere and I'd, you might speak to 200 people. Right. Now you have to actually drive there and get there and all the travel and time. If it's in the States, like a day's trip, podcast, I just jump online. Yeah. Spend an hour talking to somebody, which I quite enjoy anyway. Who doesn't like talking about themselves? I mean, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> well, people seem to be interested. I love it when they talk about different things though. When they talk about something like history and stuff, it's more interesting. I yeah. like talking about business, but it, it, it's fun to talk about history and science and current affairs and economics and mm -hmm. different things. Science of happiness, yeah. that's really good. Yeah. I, I, love, I love just learning. I, I, I read several books a week actually, I just enjoy it. I had a bit of insomnia last night and I was reading this book about um, happiness in the workforce, mm -hmm. in the workplace, which was really interesting. And then I came back and I was talking to um, Rocky before about how we could make staff feel more welcome. Mm -hmm. What can we do? How can we, yeah, make them feel more positive about their job? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
a wonderful book. I, I don't know if you're much of a reader, but there's a wonderful book called The Man Who Broke Capitalism about Jack Welch. Yep. Just showing how incredibly destructive that guy was. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just in case I need to know this. It's like, hold on a moment, let me look this up. What book is that? Aussie Slang Dictionary. Oh yes, well that'll start you, start, start you on your, uh, on your, on your life but, task by, by learning how to speak English properly. By the end of this tour, I'm just going to have this like, stack of books to go home with. I was in America about oh, 20 years ago and, uh, and uh, this guy said to me, in Oklahoma, he said to me, I wish I had an accent like yours. And I said, I don't have an accent, you have an accent. <laughs> it's true though, even we have one Aussie who works for us at, out of one of our shops and he gets more reviews on Google than any other employee combined. And simply because if he just goes up to someone and starts talking to them, they just want to talk to him and talk to him and then they mention his name. So, it works in your favor. It does too. <laughs> All right, where else, can we, where else can we visit? We could go down to um, the marketing office. Oh, fair. <laughs> Have a good one, thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. They said this was like 21 acres, this whole place? 20 acres, yeah. 20 acres, nice. We've gotten very metric in Australia, but uh, acres is one thing we've kept of the old imperial system. Oh. Yeah, it is actually four hectares, but we usually say it's it's twenty acres. How is the uh, impact of like the interest rates going up? Is that substantial on real estate yet, or not really a whole lot? Yeah, it's starting to have an impact. Yeah, some of the prices are going down. Yeah, I think I think it will. I think it'll crash the industry a bit. Right. Buildings are um, property is grossly overvalued. Right. It's. It's insane. It's very unfair too. It makes it very hard for young people to buy into their first house. Right. Don't think it's healthy. No. You need a correction. Yeah. It's okay when you own property. It's nice. You see the value going up all the time, and you can borrow against it. But not good overall. Right. Not good. Okay. This would be better film during lunch, wouldn't it? When you saw it. What? Okay. All right. Yeah, well we bought this place um, 2003, 19 years ago because mm. we wanted a place which was a head office but also had people come and stay for training. Yeah. So this was a, this was actually a site, this, this, with those buildings over there were already in place, ones we were walking through, um, the lecture theatre was in place, this was just a single much smaller building which was the cafeteria, so mm. what we've done is extend it and remodel it. Make it a lot bigger. It's so obviously for a week out of each month it's busy because of training, but the other three weeks is like conferences, oh, yeah, retreats, yeah, conferences, weddings, yeah, retreats, this kind of thing. Got it. Hi. We do a lot of um, external business. Yeah, it's not a bad business really. I mean, we wouldn't do it if it wasn't for gyms. Right. Yeah. Well, we're obviously by far the biggest customer, and and bigger with time too. As the as the business grows, we have more and more stuff going on. Right. Yeah. Like on Saturday, we're going to have. Um, a lot of staff, a lot of franchises coming back to do a seminar on improving your business, you know, putting more workers on and so forth. Oh. So that'll be fun. That's something I knew we're trying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> good. Yes, I know. Yeah, you told me you were going to do that. That's great. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't yeah, have told you, but you already know about it. But anyway, that's. But it's, a, it's just a new concept. So right. we're always trying different things, basically saying, how can we add more value to our franchisees? Mm -hmm. You never stop thinking about it. The yeah. Marvel Stadium thing is just quite new. Right. We use some of the money from the selling of surplus leads, and we say, here's a, but we're actually giving precedence to, to franchisees who've been with us a long time, like 10 years plus, or have got great star ratings, oh, yeah. which more and more of our franchisees have anyway. Right. So we kind of recognize that. And this seminar, for example, is a $250 cost, but if you're one of those categories, good star ratings or um, you get it for free, which yeah. is cost about just about everybody. Yeah, because yeah. the ones who are good at what they do would tend to be the ones that want to grow. Yeah. Huh. How many rooms are you in now? Yeah. We've got 96 rooms in this place wow. now. Wow. And then if, assuming there's not franchisees here, how many of those are, are usually filled? Like half of them or? Oh, or just depending I, on retreat. I, I'd love to think it was 50% occupied. I don't think so. Okay, okay. So it is really for the franchisees mostly. 
Well, we're the biggest clients. I wouldn't say most of the money, but don't forget, okay. it's, only, it's only basically, mostly three days in, in every three weeks. Right. So most, and then, you, then you've got ongoing training for mowing and cleaning and so forth. But right. We do have weddings here. We're looking got at it. funerals. There's a chapel as well. We're looking at, we do a lot of church retreats and so forth right. and motivational things. It's not sort of a, not for the corporate crowd. They want, tend to want the more plush and right. you know, bright lights and gambling and stuff. Yeah. But for people who want a nice place, reasonable cost. Yeah. The food clean. is amazing. Yeah. I'm telling you, the food is great. He, he doesn't do too bad, actually. He's not very good on healthy food. He's <laughs> has to sort of push the... The salads are at the end. That's where I load up on, at the um, end there. Just give me some vegetables, I reckon. <laughs> not, not, too much, not too much fatty carbs and stuff. Yeah, but basically, it was, it was built by the university before we got here. So mm -hmm. in a sense, we picked this up for the land value because... because they wanted to keep the same zoning for some reason. Council seemed to like that, so huh. um, it was it was all in the package, and it's got seating for about 120 people in there, right. which is conveniently because that's about hundreds about the most we ever have on site so far. Though it is growing, mm -hmm. um, if we if we got more than about 120, we'd have to have training more often. Right, but that works well. Yeah, that's good. Do you want to have a look at marketing yeah. or finance? I get an amazing amount of exercise just just walking back and forth from my home office and around here. I really average about five thousand steps a day. Well, I was gonna say even yesterday, like I didn't really, I felt like I sat all day long, but because just the breaks walking around, I would look down at my watch. The and the last night is sixty nine hundred steps. I was like, let's go. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> One of the big problems with the people sitting all the time. It's not very healthy. Right. I actually prefer to stand and, and talk to people and walk around and all kinds of things. Yeah. So they have the standing desk option in the office there too. Yeah, we always look at anything like that. Anything that yeah. make your work life healthier. Yeah. Take breaks. So down here, is this the sales side of things then? Sales. This is, this is different kinds of places. Um, there's, there's, there's no... There's no set division, it's just a case of people like a certain office, they move there. Got it. <laughs> <coughs> is, is Jim's mowing, like the mowing division, still the fastest growing? Not the fastest growing at all. Really? Actually, really? Dog wash is growing faster, cleaning is growing faster. Mowing is growing, but not as fast as some of the others. Okay. Actually, the fastest growing one at the moment is laundry. It's gone from zero to 40 franchisees in about 18 months. It's been really good. Is that like mobile washing or like like delivery type services? That laundry one? Oh, it's not like a laundromat where they come No, no yeah, no, it's, it's mobile. You go and pick it up. Right, got it. That's the only thing we do. This is... Um, okay. This is part, this is part of our software development team in here. Okay, very nice. Stuart's been with us for how long now? 20? 29 years. Mercy, 29 years. Wow, so there must have been what, a couple hundred franchisees when you joined? Uh, there were a few, yeah. There were a few more than that probably, but yeah. Mercy. Not many. Wow. 29 years, wow. That's long Doing time software ago. from the beginning? Building the software? Was, he was it, he was IT in the beginning. That was uh, all there was. It was just Stuart. Got it. Yeah. Interesting. It's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You, actually, you're, you're the longest term now, aren't you? Um, for staff, yeah. Yeah, for staff. Wow. There's very few people in Jim's group. He actually moved, you know, we had an office in, in, um, in Bayswater and he moved his home to Heathmont. And, and then <laughs> within the next year we actually moved up here, so I felt sorry for him from that point of view. But he, he, he's, he bikes a lot, cycles a lot. Okay, very cool. Goes off on long, he, he's a, he's a visit to your country actually, he goes and does cycling tours for the Rockies and stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mad nice. keen cyclist. So Washington, do you go to Washington much? Uh, I haven't been across there. Okay. Um, Washington State. State, uh, state. Uh, across there, follow the Rockies down from uh, Canada to... Oh wow. Denver. Oh my goodness, wow. So you start in Whistler, I like Whistler. Uh, up, uh, uh, Prince George. Prince George. Oh my goodness, that's way up there. Mercy, goodness. Yeah, he's a he's a super fit guy. He's a 
I believe he's in fitness like me, don't you? Mm. And he's probably a lot fitter than I am. Not a very good chess player though. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> <laughs> you coming to games tonight? tonight? Yes. Yeah, good on you. Anybody else coming? Who's coming tonight? Oh, good. That's great. Can have a few there. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, I won't guys. I won't any longer. I'm assuming they probably have teams that they work with externally. Yes, well that isn't all of them, it's just a few of them. A lot of them work off-site or um, remotely overseas. There's about 50 on the team, I think. Wow. This is our... This is our marketing office in here. Yeah. This deals with the uh, all the peculiar things of websites and social media and, and um, all that sort of weird stuff, don't you? SEO, AdWords, those kinds of areas. Cool. Fast yeah. growing department. Got some good people, so. Is it a challenge sometimes when they're so, the individual locations are so close to one another from an SEO standpoint? Got it. Yeah. That's awesome. Got to make sure it, um, you, you don't have toxic links. Right. Because you had a lot of problems with in the past. You'd have links to irrelevant sites and stuff. And then also make sure that we, we catch on the, the right number of uh, terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you, you, you've got like how many like something like um, security doors? How many different terms would you be would you be searching on? Security, security windows, yeah. security, so you can have several names, uh, windows, and have security keys. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, um, I think you told me there was like fifteen or twenty different terms that you search on. You yeah. can search on. Oh really? Depends right. on the so we can go uh, along that uh, route as well. Or you know, later on, if, if, if uh, needs to time, uh, time. Uh, so the computer does. Yeah. So Have you had to focus a lot on the mobile side too? Mobile side. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Do you know how many, how, what percentage of your traffic's from mobile right now? A photo. Uh, a photo. Like 60, 70 percent? We've seen just spike since COVID, just no amount of it on mobile versus it's desktop. It's growing, but you're yeah. about to die. Everything's got to be mobile friendly these days, that's for sure. Yeah. Do you all set up all the Google listings for each location then too, like all the franchisees? Uh, yes. Most of the sites. Yeah. Okay. Well. Depends, on, depends on the division. division. We look up to certain divisions, other oh, yeah. divisions have more of their own people. Okay. Juice is very uh, kind of decentralized in some ways, yep. so it depends which ones are ours. Yeah. But it's a, it's, a, it's a fairly recent to have a department, but it's going very well actually. Okay. We're getting some great results. I saw those um, reports on those uh, the new um, websites. Websites are really very impressive. What you, what you guys did with that, it's good. Okay, take care, guys. You coming to the game tonight tonight? Who's coming? Uh, I'm not because I live uh, further out, so. You've got an excuse. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, come if you can. It's good. It'll be good. If not, book it in for next week. We'll do it every third week during training on the Wednesday. Okay, this here is finance. Pay the bills. Yes. Good afternoon. This is the, uh, <laughs> this here is the Jim's Group official clown. <laughs> Tonight's game night, you gotta be there. Oh look, he even has games on his desk. <laughs> I, I am the champion clown, this is my award right here. Oh, what'd you win? I won a clown award. A clown award? Yeah, that's, that's official. <laughs> <laughs> and you're definitely the clown. We've got to get you an official oh, red yeah. nose. And... My, my nose is red already. That's hilarious. You, you missed out on the, the favorite one. Jim's a big fan of making people um, go a bit red. Yeah, I am. You can make people go red. <laughs> but our prime candidate's not here today. Yeah, she's uh, she's not around. She's she's at home. Do you want me to do a little face like Yeah. <laughs> she, is, she is so good at, at, at blushing. Yeah. Oh, man. You in the Monopoly champion? No, no, I no. want to be, but I'm just for the clown. Do you want to let me win any other award? Who's coming tonight? Who's coming on tonight? Uh, I, not, I have to study the whole thing. I have to study. The I love clown college. <laughs> clown <laughs> college. Clown college. <laughs> <laughs>
policy of fans tonight? The circus. Yeah, circus. Yeah, there circus. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then these guys, autographs for centuries. Okay. Can I get an autograph as well? <laughs> Come on, Monopoly. Yeah. You're Monopoly, you give you. Yeah, the, the finest Monopoly. The one who will try to play it. We will have to play across there. Only tonight. You're already a clown. What are you studying for? <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to graduate from. This department <laughs> does 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 fun things. They went rafting. Oh really? That was uh, was that earlier this year or that was last year? This year, yeah. They went off on rafts and they went down this steam and somebody fell in the water, but not him. Oh, yeah, not me. Oh my but, um, <laughs> since this is rolling, <laughs> you know, Jim tried to throw a spider at me. Everybody here knows. Oh. I'll do my best to keep you entertained. <laughs> Don't thank me, it's just part of my job. <laughs> and over here is the bounce of our lovely ladies in our finance department. The big cheese is away, she's in the Philippines setting up in a branch office over there. Oh, nice. You're just getting that one started then, over there in the Yeah, it's a, it's a new, we've got oh, a lot of back office staff, which is good actually, because it means that uh, I come in here at six o'clock and everybody's gone home, which is a definite yeah. improvement over what it used to be. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. Okay, um, I think that's about all really. All right, awesome. What's the hour differential in terms of time change between Western Australia and here, like three hours? No, I think it's about two hours. Oh, two, it's not too bad. Yeah, so we, we run the office till about 9 p.m. here, which is 7 p.m. there, so it's not too bad. We have to open up earlier, of course, in New Zealand. Right. Okay. What's your sort of setup like compared to this thing in the States? We're not, we, we want this. We want to get everyone together. This is the goal, right? Because right now we have five different offices all across the county. So we're trying to build something not this nice or this big, but something that we can bring everyone together. It's just nice to have that camaraderie and not be traveling between, I'm just like Jim, I hate traveling, commuting, so driving between offices is annoying. There are three for like the call center, and then another, uh, another office, and then a training facility. It's just trying to bring out one house that everyone can be together and have that yeah, team. It's good, it's a great feeling actually. If you've, you've seen what's happened, what, the impression of training. We, we, people get what we call gymified. Yeah. They, they pick up the culture. Mm -hmm. We find having them in-person training where they're there and, yep. they, and they meet people like myself and Dan and everybody else and they get to know each other. It, it, it builds a culture which is very quite powerful. Yeah. A very strong sense of community in our franchisees, mm -hmm. which you often hear about. They, 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 they like each other, they meet together, they help each other a lot. Yeah. And we try and encourage that kind of feeling. Of yeah. yeah, when they come for training, it's nice to be able to actually see this happening, see the calls, and see the staff and the, you know, the conference center, and that's what you know, we need to do. Because just otherwise it seems so fragmented training them here and then offices over here and call center over here and then so no it's very very impressive